How are you doing? Good, thank you, Graham. Good, good. Um, just tell me firstly, Wayne, uh, is everybody in a state of readiness, uh, particularly a state of fitness for this tour? Are all the players in your squad available to play and hit the ground running next week? Yes. Yeah, uh, the players that came into camp with Niggles are, are all uh, been working extremely hard. Medical team, strength and conditioning team, all been doing a very good job. So we're very pleased with where the squad's at. And you brought in a, a new player today, uh, Harry O'Connor. Can you just uh, tell us what the reasoning was behind that? Yeah, Thomas Francis just picked up a niggle in his back. Um, so it's been a, a, a bit of a problem for him uh, on and off in the season. So we're just treating that with care. And uh, that's a, a precautionary measure, really, to make sure that we've got the numbers we need for training and we can uh, prepare as well as we need to. So how how much of a worry is the Thomas Francis injury? We expect them to be uh, fully fit for the first test. But as I say, it's a precaution to make sure that we've got uh, the numbers to get through what we need to get through. Right. And is Harry O'Connor someone you've kept an eye on uh, over recent weeks? Yeah, look, he's one of, of a number of young players across the, the positions in the game that we're keeping an eye on. Um, we've spoken to uh, the guys at the Scarlets and they speak very highly of him in terms of where he's at in his game currently uh, and where he can get to in the future. So he's one that uh, we think will benefit by, uh, by being a, a part of this trip. Can you just uh, explain, Wayne, what's happening with Gareth Williams as far as uh, his position in your in your coaching is concerned? Yeah, nothing's changed. Gareth's um, full steam ahead in terms of training and bringing the normal um, Gareth to training. Uh, he's fully committed to this tour, and uh, there's been an approach um, which is uh, which is nice for any coach to be approached by another organisation to say, "Look, we'd love to have you," um, and that's been through the front door, and we've been openly having conversations about that. Um, nothing is finalised and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't happen until after the tour. It's not a distraction, you feel, in any way? No, these things these things happen to players, they happen to coaches uh, on a regular basis. And look, um, from our point of view, we're just looking at whether or not uh, an alignment with a club would be beneficial for the game in Wales. And I think the short answer to that is probably yes. It's just making sure that um, it's done in a timely manner so that everybody uh, gets what they need out of it. Right. Do you see this then as maybe at the shape of things to come? A lot of your uh, assistant coaches, your management team having more of an influence across all the four regions? We certainly love to. Um, the, we talk about alignment all the time between uh, union, uh, sorry, country and, and club. And uh, you see that in Ireland, you see that in New Zealand, you see that in a lot of places. And certainly I think it's an area where we can get better. Um, and it's certainly something we'll be working towards. And we, we currently are working towards that. As far as this tour is concerned in general, Wayne, um, you've been written off by a lot of pundits, written off by the whole of the South African media, um, the suggestion being that these test matches are, are, are foregone conclusions, um, that it's more or less a, a waste of air fuel you, you're getting on a plane. Is that a motivating factor? How does that make you feel? Yeah, look, it's it's just people reporting on the facts at the time. I mean, I think we were written off in the 21 Six Nations as well. Um, but I think in international rugby, if you write any team off, uh, you do it at your peril. And, you know, you can look back in our Six Nations and the, the good performance against France and then the poor performance against Italy. So, you know, it's a, it's a Welsh team that turns up on the day, which is going to be what South Africa have to deal with. And we're hoping that's going to be a very good Welsh team, obviously. And we're certainly going there with, with aims that, uh, and things that we want to achieve on the tour. What would represent success for you? Do you have to win at least one game to call this tour a success? Well, internally, that's what we want to do. We want to achieve success on the tour, and success meaning winning games of rugby. Now, if we win one, two or three, uh, it would be a success compared to what's happened um, in the past because we haven't won away. So, look, from our point of view, it's a... It's a a huge challenge, obviously. We're playing the world champions in their backyard at altitude in the first two tests um, in front of their home crowd for the first time since winning the World Cup. So they'll be heavily motivated. And look, in test rugby, you, you want the ultimate challenge as a player and, and as coaches. And this is probably the ultimate challenge, South Africa at altitude, um, you know, coming off the back of our six nations and where they're, they're at in their game. So uh, a big challenge and one that uh, I've got to say, the, the boys are, are working really really hard and I would think that we'll be a step up from where we were in our last match. Um, talking of step up, we've seen the South African dominance of the URC in the last 
few weeks of the competition. Is that a bit of an ominous sign for you uh, of the gulf between teams, between players, or, or do you think that that is, has been, uh, can't be used as a yardstick for this tour? No, I don't think you can use it as a yardstick. I think it's it's clear for everyone to see that the clubs have struggled in South Africa. We're going over there not as a club team, but as an international team with the best players available from Wales. So, you know, we're pulling on the national jersey and, uh, you know, there, there's a lot to play for. Uh, we're 14 months out or just over from a Rugby World Cup. The players know. We, we've talked about where we are in the in the World Cup cycle. Uh, and it's very, very important that um, we put our best foot forward as individuals on this tour and collectively as a group. So, look, there's there's a lot to play for here for our boys, and um, I'm sure that, that uh, they're relishing the opportunity. And just lastly from me, Wayne, I think it's the first time we've had a chance to have a chat with you uh, in a media session since uh, Phil Bennett passed away. I know he was someone you knew well and, and uh, took a lot of... Uh, wise counsel from when you first joined the Scarlets. J just sum up the influence and impact that Phil Bennett had for you personally as someone coming from New Zealand into Welsh rugby. Oh, look, it couldn't have been bigger, really. I, I was the first overseas coach to come into the Scarlets and, you know, a very, very proud club with, with a, a massive history, you know, Clinethley days. And so for me to... to meet the legend and uh, person, the, the person that I watched play when I was a youngster and admire that massive sidestep of his and the skill set that he possessed um, was was really, really special. And he couldn't have been a kinder man. And uh, he always had time for me and, and was at the end of a phone to catch up for a beer or a chat. And uh, look, he's just a great guy to have a conversation with during a match if you're watching or after a match and so knowledgeable. And, um, it, you know, whenever you talk rugby, he also, also had a, a great story to tell as well and a great sense of humour. So just a lovely, lovely man and, and so sad to see him pass. Well said. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. I'll come to Gareth uh, now. And if anyone else has any questions, please raise your virtual hand for the live section. How are you, Wayne? All right? Yeah, good. Thank you. Just just on Harry O'Connor and the front row, you're going out there. Slavka, obviously, very strong there. You've got the two sort of uncapped tight heads there alongside the other two. Are you concerned at all about how much you're going to expose them to out there and possible against the Springboks? Well, it's always a concern if things don't go well, but there's also the opportunity for young players to learn a hell of a lot and and grow. And, and there's no better learning than going up against the best in the world in any sport. And uh, at the moment, you'd have to say that South Africa's scrum has, has probably shown that it's consistently been the best in the world. Their line-out drive is superb. Their forward play is, is you know, pro probably second to none, really. Um, they're, they're not world champions for nothing, you know. They they are very, very good at what they do. So if you're a young guy going on tour coming up against that, it's uh, you're going to learn a lot, you know. You're going to learn how much work you've got to do to get to that level. Uh, or hopefully you're going to go very, very well and, and start off what could be a very long career for yourself. So it's an exciting time for any youngster going on a tour like this, I believe. And just uh, Josh Adams and Thomas Williams, they looking OK? Because they were the people who sort of missed out towards the end of the season. Yeah, they've been training well, so uh, very happy with their progress. And Nick Tompkins and Tommy Reffel coming into, you know, after successful seasons, obviously Tommy Reffel after uh, winning the title. How much have they added this week? Well, not a lot, really. It's just been more around phone conversations and getting homework done and looking at video. So the coach has been speaking to them and uh, look, they're up with the play. What they need straight after a big final like that is a few days off and they've been able to do that and just have a bit of a breather. Um, they probably had a few celebrations as well. So look, they'll join us and, and uh, they'll do a lot of homework between now and getting on the aeroplane. So you know, we're away on Thursday, so it'll come together pretty quickly. A final one for me. Um, a lot of the boys haven't played a lot of rugby since mid-May. Are you comfortable what you've, you've been able to get enough sort of work into them in the last 10 days and will next week as well? Yeah, well, it's been really, um, as, as you all know, it's been really warm conditions here and we're going out for a second training run in this afternoon. So the sunscreen's been on, but they've been, they've been working very, very hard. There's been a lot of contact sessions. Um, we had a live, uh, live hit out again and scenarios with the referee on Friday and, and they came through that well. So I think we're preparing the best we can for the amount of rugby that the boys have had in the last month or two. Thank you. Thank you. Alex? Hi, Wayne. Um, some of the success that Wales have had against South Africa has been based around a strong kicking game. Um, South Africa's strengths are well, are well, well known. Uh, just what are some of the things that you've been working on to take out to, the, to this tour, specifically, obviously, with games at altitude as well? 
I'm not sure, sure exactly who's on the call, whether we've got any of our friends from South Africa there, but um, look, we're, we're... Yeah, okay, thanks for that. No, we're looking, clearly we're looking at uh, where we're playing. The first two games are at altitude. Uh, we, we've obviously spoken with the, the teams that have been playing there and we've looked closely at videotape of, of those games. And what we've got to do is make sure that we're, give ourselves a chance in these games over the 80 minutes. And so we're looking at how we want to play the game, what we do in certain parts of the field and evaluating um, how we play at sea level versus how we play at altitude. So you'll probably find that, um, you know, uh, we, we've got to make sure we play at the right areas of the field, which means there may be a bit more kicking. But, uh, you know, altitude, it's like having a wind behind you in both halves. So you're silly not to use it at times. In terms of some of your attacking plays, is, is footwork and avoiding contact and set piece something that's going to be really, really vital given the, their strengths at scrum and line-up? Yeah, well, they're very big men, aren't they? And they're very good in the collision area. So we've got to make sure that we give ourselves every opportunity in those areas to, to get some go forward and footwork's going to be essential. Um, getting ourselves running good running lines. So those are sorts of things that we've been working on and uh, we'll continue to work on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll now move to the embargo.